Good afternoon, ladies. I'm so glad that you're all here joining us in Far Above Rubies today. I've thoroughly enjoyed receiving messages and comments from you all the last week telling me that this group has been a blessing to you. Know that it has been a blessing for me as well. If no one has told you yet today, you are beautiful and cherished and valuable and your price is far above rubies. Today we're driving into, uh, diving or driving, whatever makes you happy, into Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3 is what we're going to focus on. It says, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. But the Lord tests the heart. Why? Why does the Lord test my heart? Why does he need to test my heart? What good does it do and what do I gain from him testing my heart? The first five years of my marriage and our ministry together as husband and wife, the Lord really put my husband and I through the ringer. In the last five years, we've had our share of trials and storms, but in the first five years, I feel like we had our share plus a few other people's shares of trials and storms. There was a moment where I found myself sitting on the floor in my house and praying, God, I need someone to pray for me because I don't even know what to pray for myself right now. It was one of the hardest seasons of storms and trials I have ever been in, and I wouldn't wish it upon anyone. But what's hard to see when you're standing in the middle of your storm and your trial is what you gain from it, how it strengthens you and how it betters you, how it matures you in Christ and deepens your relationship with God. Romans 5 verses 3 and 4 says, we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials because we know that they produce endurance and that they develop a strength of character and that that strength of character builds our confidence and our hope in our salvation. James 1 and 3 says that knowing that the testing of your patience of your, excuse me, of your faith produces patience. That's another thing. There, scripture tells us throughout all of the books of the Bible, the many things that being in a trial, being in a storm, being in a testing of our faith produces. One area it even says that the, the testing of our faith will give us the crown of life. We have to go through trials and we have to go through storms to receive that crown of life. Some trials are meant to refine us personally. Like a potter that creates a beautiful piece of work and upon inspecting it finds a flaw, finds an imperfection, and with his hands upon it, he begins to mold it and shape it and change it. How do you think that feels for us, the piece of pottery? Not too good, but it's done with love. If he didn't love it, if he didn't want to see it be beautiful, he would discard it and not worry about it. The storms in those first five years of our marriage and ministry, I believe, shaped me and rubbed the smooth, um, the rough edges off of my life and my character. There's a, a woman in, that was a part of our lives and in ministry over us that I call her my oyster because as rough as she was with me and as hard as she was on me, I believe that her being in my life turned my life from something rough and then ugly and not so beautiful and began to shape me and mold me into the minister's wife that I was meant to be. Other trials are meant that, to be a witness for others and they really don't benefit us at all. And this might be the hardest kind of trial to go through because you don't gain anything from it. Instead, for instance, Job wasn't tried so that he could be perfected. Job was tried so that his faith would shine so brightly to those around him that it would prove that even through devastation, even through hardship, unimaginable hardship, that his relationship with God was unshakable. Something you're going through right now may not be for your benefit. You're thinking, God, why are you trying me? Why are you testing me? I feel like I'm going down the right path. I don't feel like there's any rough edges you need to smooth off of me right now. Maybe the trial that you are going through isn't for your benefit. Maybe it's for somebody close to you. Maybe it's so that your light shines brightly and your relationship with God proves unshakable when they look at it. I'm going to read a scripture to us and then I'm going to be done. 1 Peter chapter 4, 
uh, verses 12 through 19. I'm going to skip a couple in between as they don't relate to what we're talking about. It says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you were going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you're insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed for the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for, and it lists a long list. In other words, don't say, God, why are you testing me when you're standing in the consequences of your decisions? That's not what we're talking about. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name. So if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right, the Bible says, and trust your lives to the God who created you, for he will never fail you. Sweet sister, God will never fail you, no matter what hardship you are going through. No matter what season you find yourself in, God will never fail you. Don't give up, don't give in, don't throw in the towel with your walk with Jesus. God will never fail you. And that is a promise from his word. First challenge today, read Proverbs chapter 17. Share something below that interests you, you spoke to you today. Number two, if you are going through a trial, pray, pray, and pray some more. Draw close to Jesus and let his light shine through you brightly and trust him. If you know someone that's going through a trial or season in their life of trial and tribulation, be there for them, pray for them, intercede for them. Be the Aaron and the her holding up Moses' arms. Don't let them lose their battle. You can hold up their arms and you can help them win their battle. God bless you. I love you. I hope you all have a beautiful Sunday. I'm sorry today's devotional is a little lengthy, but we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.